Hello. How are you doing on the interwebs today? Thank you for swinging by my channel. Uh, welcome uh, or welcome back. Uh, today, as you could probably tell by the title, we're going to be talking about an infamous, and actually this is the correct use of infamous, but the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. This one has gotten a crap ton of flack in media. It seems very polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. Um, I happen to actually really like it a lot. Curse you, cough, for making noise in the background. Sorry, today has been like a really noisy neighbor day, but um, bear with me. So just to break down the palette really quickly, it looks exactly in shape and size like the Modern Renaissance palette. It even has the same velvety rub on your face, feels good texture, except don't actually rub on your face because I have makeup on. But um, pan size, everything is the same. As far as the subculture palette, let's get my camera to focus. These are the gorgeous colors. They are very, very grungy, gray, base, intense pigment. These being pigmented, if everything people have said about them is not a problem. You have got a majority of mattes. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14? 14, 14, 14. Yeah, 14 colors. I can't count. Go me. So we've got 14 colors. Um, out of those 14, 11 are mattes. And then we have got two duochromes, one right here and one here. And then a kind of a rusty, super shimmery color right here. This color I'm gonna say is crap. The car driving outside agrees with me. <laughs> but out of all of the colors, um, this one, this pink one right here, I think is just bad. Hands down bad. The pigmentation on it is horrible. It doesn't matter what I do to it. I can never get it to have like the popper impact that I want. This duochrome one, these are both duochrome. This duochrome one right here is like a gold with a green. It's an interesting color. It is way more pigmented than this one, but still just kind of like a meh. It didn't get anything crazy from me. And then this one right here, the foil one, is a gorgeous color, but it's very temperamental. Um, I think that you do need to foil it to really get the impact that you want, but you can't use too much product, which is really easy, because as soon as you put too much product on your lid with this, instantly, like, instantly will start to flake off and just look bad. Um, so with that positive note, uh... All the mattes I really, really like in this palette, but this palette is not user-friendly. This isn't a palette that you will just pick up, grab, blend five colors, they'll just smush together, and you'll have a smoky, generic, insert whatever look you're going for. Um, you have to play around with this palette. You have to figure out how it works for you, like what will really get the best results that you want. And... These are so pigmented, I think one of the things that's really been causing issues is people have been putting way too much product on their eye. Uh, I did that, like the first time I tried this, and this is why I'm not the biggest fan of first impressions. I watch the videos and I like them, but first impressions, if you don't know how to use a product or if it's different than what you're used to playing around with, can be really misleading because the first time I used this, I was like, this eyeshadow palette sucks. I put it in my return bag and was going to return it to Ulta. But... I watched Anastasia's video and how she was like, we like to put out products that challenge people that are different than what's out on the market. And I was like, huzzah, I am motivated. And then I went back home. <laughs> I sat back down with it and I made myself play around with it a little bit more. So this palette works best for me and it works well for me. Not even like a meh. It works really well for me when I think of using these colors in like a color blocking scheme. For example, I have done, uh, like the cut crease I had, the first color that I put down was the dark red, and then I buffed out the edges a little bit with a light color, and then I go back in. I don't go on on a giant fluffy blending brush and just whoosh, 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 because if you do, you're mixing, you're mixing too much pigment, you're mixing too many colors, and it's going to get brown on you like that. It'll just look bad. But when you go in and you place down a color that you want and then blend it out and then you place down the second color that you want and blend it out, that's really when you'll start to get to cool looks with this. And also, just to get a little artsy, a little artsy on you, bear with me for two seconds, um, these really are more like pigments than just eyeshadows. So that being said, when you think of these more as paints and less as eyeshadows. I think that may help like your mentality a little bit with how you use it. 
Um, because when you think of a color wheel, your primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. Google a color wheel. It'll take two seconds and it'll give you a visual that will make what I'm saying make sense. But if you mix those three primary colors, then you're going to get a brown. And so when you look at this palette, a lot of these colors are secondary colors, which are made up of primary colors. But anyways, point being, if you mix a green, which is made up of blue and yellow, with a red, you are essentially mixing all three primary colors together, and that is going to equal brown. So that's why I think people are like, oh my god, it gets so muddy, and it's like, you are mixing colors that are creating the color brown. If you do that, then it will get muddy on you. It's, it's just they're pigmented enough where that's what's going to happen. So you have to be really careful when you're mixing the colors with this to know that, oh, if I mix this color with this color, that's what's going to happen. And with that being said, that means that this palette is going to very much, if you like it or you don't like it, if you can adapt how you apply your eyeshadows and fill around with it, then you can get a lot of cool stuff. But if you're like, you know what, I like how I do it. I like to blend a lot of colors. This is how I like to put on my eyeshadow, which is great. That's what I normally do. I'm not knocking it. But if you can't kind of like switch that up a little bit, then I don't think you'll like this palette. Just because it will get muddy on you and it won't look that great. Plus also, these are so pigmented. When you put on too much product and you keep blending it out, you're just going to be moving product around. It's going to start to look really patchy really quickly. It's easy to over blend these eyeshadows. Like I said, this is not a user friendly palette, but you can just get awesome things with it. But you cannot over blend it either because when you over blend it, it does this thing where you'll get like a bald spot in the middle and then it'll just move all the product like outside. And for the kind of brush that I like to use, you'll see in the video, I don't go in with a big fluffy brush because it puts the product all over your eyelid, which is what a big fluffy brush does. But it doesn't give you the control that I like to have when I'm using something this pigmented. So I go in with smaller fluffy brushes, which you'll see in the tutorial. I think I covered everything. Let's see, let's go through the mental checklist. Mattes, I love all the mattes in this. Non-matte colors are meh. As far as pigmentation, pigmented AF. I'll show you the swatches in a minute. Uh, blendability, they do blend for me. You have to be patient and you can't put on too much product. As soon as you put on too much product, you're over. You're just done and it'll look ugly. But um, these do blend for me. You just have to have a very light hand with them. And only dip into your pen once. If you mash your pen like this, it will not go well. Uh, I think that is it though. The colors, I love the colors. And I think my final thing is that's important before I send you into the tutorial is I bought my palette from Ulta and I did do it on the actual release date of the palette. The only reason I'm saying this is I know that a lot of the negative press came out before the palette was actually released from PR packages. They didn't make any public things that I'm aware of saying that they switched how they were doing things. But, uh, so I don't know if they switched anything or didn't switch anything, but I feel like I should just tell you that for the sake of maybe something is different. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into the swatches, and then I'll show you how I did the eye makeup on my face. Okie rookie, so these are all the swatches. I didn't show myself doing them because I feel like of all the palettes in the world, this is one where you don't have to prove like pigmentation in your swatch. But so for all the mattes, I just used a flat synthetic, and then for all of these shimmery shades, I did use my finger because they didn't swatch well with a brush, which is kind of normal. Um, but this is the color cube, just to give you a little like zoop. Da -da -da -da. So the first row is this is the first row right here, and then this is the second row. The first one being cube, so that light pink color. This is the only one I have really big issue with the formula. Come on, camera, focus. This is the only one I have really big issues with. I think the formula on it is really bad. I know some people have said it's great, some people haven't. I had to dig my finger into the pan to be able to get a swatch to look that vibrant. And compared to everything else on my arm, it, it obviously doesn't look vibrant. Then the next color we have is Dawn, which is kind of like your good generic neutral crease color. Then we have Destiny, which is that army green color. The issue that I have between Destiny and then this color right here, Untamed, is that they look really freaking similar. 
when you actually are swatching and working with them. Um, but I, I don't have a big issue with the formula necessarily. And then uh, this color right here is Adorn, which is really pretty. Uh, All Star is the red color in the palette. This is the one I found to be most patchy. Then we've got Mercury right here, which is a nice cool tone brown. I popped it in the crease before, and I liked it there. And then this color right here is Axis, which is the really kind of dark, bluey forest green. And then for the second row, we have Roxy, which is a really pretty peach color. Then we have got Electric, which is a like a gold green reflect, is what it has in it. Then Fudge, which is this brown color right here. And then we have New Wave, which is this really cool orange, like orangey yellow. Then next to that we have Untamed, which is the color I think looks really similar to Destiny, which is this one. This one has a bit more green in it. Destiny has more green in it, and Untamed is more, or sorry, Destiny has more gray in it, and Untamed just has more green. But, um, it's kind of, it's funny. So you have Axis, and then you have Destiny, and if Axis and Destiny had a baby, then you get Untamed. And then uh, next to Untamed, we have Edge, which is this mustard yellow color. And then next to that is Rowdy, which is a very uh, deep, kind of cool toned uh, brown. Okie rokie, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the tutorial part for the eye makeup. I've already got my eyes primed with uh, some, what did I use today? I used the Urban Decay Primer Potion. And then I just set it with a skin color. That's the only eyeshadow I used that wasn't from this palette. The skin colored one in this palette is a little bit uh, too dark for what I like to use to set my eyes. And then you're going to see me uh, going in on the first color that I am going in with is going to be that uh, rich red color. And I'm going in straight with that. So... No other crease color or anything like that. I'm going to just gently dip once into the palette and then I'm going to start putting that on the crease. I'm using a small fluffy blending brush so it's kind of like a dense blending brush. It's like dense but fluffy at the same time. And I like using a brush like this because it lets me place the pigments exactly where it's going and I don't lose control of the product, which I think is really important with something this pigmented. So what I'm going to do is just build up the color until it's the intensity that I want, but I'm also going to keep uh, buffering it, buffering, blending it out with those little circular motions that you'll see that I think we're all, or not all of us, but the um, majority of us who've seen the YouTube videos are familiar with. And one thing I think that's important to note is I am building this color up, but I am making sure that I only add product when I like don't have any more product on my brush and I'm sure that I have blended and placed all of the product on my eye. Um, so only when I don't have any more product to work with will I dip back into the pan to get a bit more eyeshadow and I think that's really important. Um, when you're working with any palette that's pigmented is to be aware of that. Now I'm just kind of going in and feathering out the edges a little bit. And then the next thing I'm going to go in with is on a uh, dense shader brush. I'm just applying the same eyeshadow to the end of it and I'm really concentrating the application in the crease of the eye. And I'm doing this using a stippling motion one thing I will say that I noticed with how these eyeshadows perform is uh, stippling motions work a lot better than blending motions depending on what you want to do with them. I think stippling as you can see is great to get a lot of pigment but uh, one thing I did notice in particular with this color, the other colors, the the green eyeshadows um, in this palette to me blend a lot better than, than this color. With this color once I placed it uh, it became a bit harder to blend out the edges, which you'll see right now as I'm kind of trying to gently go along that edge of like, you know, where you can see the harsh difference between the color I laid down earlier and not. 
and I was able to blend it a little bit, but this was probably the hardest part I had in blending that color was that it was hard to make that harsh line completely go away. I was able to though, um, I just, it took a bit, a bit more blending and a bit more playing around with it. So uh, next time doing like a crest, I cut crease with these colors, what I would go in with is just even like a smaller detail brush, a smaller detail blending brush. And then what I'm going in to soften that edge up, since I couldn't just blend it out with the one color alone, is I'm taking that um, light brown color, and on a small fluffy blending, blending brush I'm going in, and I am applying that to the edge of that purpley red color. And as you can see, unsurprisingly, I mentioned this earlier, when you mix that kind of light taupey brown color with uh, the red color, it's going to turn kind of a brown purple. I personally like how the color looks, so it doesn't bother me. It doesn't stay that true red color. Um, even though in the pan to me it looks a lot more red than when you put it on the eye, it reads more purple. But since we're mixing it with a color, then the color is changing. But once I did add in that brown, it became a lot easier for me uh, to mix that harsh line that I had from where I went in with the shader brush. And like I said, just to reiterate, um, I wouldn't go in with the shader brush again. I think I'd just go in with a small, fluffy, detailed brush next time to do the, the step that I did there to intensify the crease color. And then you'll just see me going in with a brush that doesn't have any more eyeshadow on it and just buffing out the edges, blending those colors together until I get it to look exactly how I want it to. So these did take a little bit of fiddling around with, but I do think I was able to get them to blend so that I did have a smooth look and uh, you can't argue with the pigmentation on these guys. And then to create the cut crease look of this, because I wanted to do a very sharp kind of stark cut crease. I'm going in with a flat synthetic brush and I'm using the um, Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the color Fair and I'm just carving out that. Now I do have smaller uh, hooded eyes, dare we say. They're not very hooded but uh, my mobile lid, when I close my eye, pretty much whatever lid color I have almost completely disappears and you can't see it. So um, there are some people, and it depends on the look you're doing, if you want, where you can take doing your cut crease above your actual crease. Nikki Tutorials does this a lot so that you can actually see the detail that is going on to the lid. For this look, I decided not to do it. I did a cut crease following the natural line of my lid, but uh, it just depends on what look you're going for. And then once we have got the cut crease out, I'm just going to go ahead and set it with a skin color eyeshadow. I want to keep the lid almost looking naked. I did get concealer. I was impatient and I didn't let the concealer dry and I didn't set it before I opened my eye all the way. And so since my eyes are kind of hooded, it transferred some concealer onto the crease color. I fixed it off camera, to be honest. You didn't need to see me. It took just a couple of seconds to blend color back into it and over it. Um, but yes, I, I am aware that there is some awkward patchiness going on. But when you see me after I put my full face makeup on, it will be gone. Okey rokey, so I put on some eyeliner. I didn't think you needed to see the struggle fest that was me attempting to put on eyeliner. But there we go, and so the top part of our eye is good. As you can see, I think these blend well. That's very much a judge for yourself. But I do like how these eyeshadows blended. And to finish off this eye look on the lower lash line, we're going to go in with that deep uh, blue-green color. I think this is such a pretty shade. And just on a tiny little detailer brush, I'm going to um, dab the brush into the eyeshadow so we get the eyeshadow on the tip of it. And I'm just going to very gently push this into my lash line. 
I'm not going to fluff it out too much. I'm just going to start by pushing it in, kind of to see the basis where I want, and then I'm going to start to trace um, about halfway into the eye, and then I'm also going to flick the eyeshadow. This is a trick that I like to do. I will follow the line of my eyeliner, and I will extend that bottom eyeshadow color a little bit actually past that eyeliner for a fun detail look. And then once we have gotten this color uh, placed exactly where we want it on a clean uh, blending brush, I'm just going to go in and soften out the edges. And then for eyeliner, the first thing that we're going to do is with the waterline, I'm going to go in with this pretty dark green color by ColourPop. I, ColourPop eyeliners I love. Some of them I think are busts, but a lot of them I think are absolutely phenomenal. This one's very pigmented and lasted a good long while, and it's actually almost a perfect color match too, so I thought this one looked cool. And then on the top of the eyes, I'm just going to tight line with my Marc Jacobs um, Blackest. And then finally, I'm going to add mascara to the eyelashes, my usual uh, Better Than Sex by Too Faced. If you wear falsies, now is the time to coat up. And that is the final look that we've got. A very simple, super simple cut crease, but I think it can still give a very dramatic and nice effect to the eyeballs. So yeah. So that was the makeup look. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the makeup tutorial, the review, and everything. One last thing I did want to add is that there is kickback with this palette. Nothing crazy. That being said, I use the palette like this. And... There is kickback, but there isn't the crazy amount you see with people who like dig into it and have it all come out. I don't know if it's because I got a later one and not a PR one. Um, I just thought that little nugget of information was important to add. But yep, overall I like this palette, but I can't reiterate this enough. If you like this palette, it's really just going to depend on how you use it. And that's not a good or a bad thing. That's just a everyone does everything differently. Not everyone likes the same techniques. So you know what, you may like it, you may hate it, but uh, I would encourage you to figure out that for yourself. Um, don't let me or another YouTube video dissuade you or not dissuade you from trying it. But yes, off preachy moment, uh, I hope to see you in the next video that you're having a good day, night, evening, wherever you are. And yeah, click that like button or subscribe if you liked it. And I think that's it. Is that it? And that's everything I have to say. <laughs> but I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.